you're going to end up having a really surreal life if you don't get NordVPN.com slash Fightful, but it's not going to be glamorous like CJ Perry's. No, without NordVPN.com slash Fightful, you can't change your virtual location with just one click. You can't protect yourself from that unsecured Wi-Fi in airports, hotels, really anywhere you're at, restaurants. There's a lot of things you can't do if you don't get NordVPN.com slash Fightful. I'll tell you what you can do. You can get four additional months free, a 30-day money-back guarantee. You can use it on your phone, your laptop, your desktop, your PC. You can choose between three tiers, whether it's a VPN, a pass, a locker, or all three. You can also get access to a lot of services a lot more affordably than what you have now. So it effectively pays for itself. NordVPN.com slash Fightful. One of the most versatile applications you can use. I personally use it every day. Enjoy our interview with CJ Perry and see a lot more of her by subscribing to CJPerry.com. What's up, you guys? Sean Rossap, Fightful here with a name you know. You used to know her as Lana. Now you know her as CJ Perry, star of The Surreal Life. It's coming back, VH1, Monday, October 25th. CJ, how you doing? I'm doing good. Thank you for having me. I, I was telling you off the air, I watched The Surreal Life a lot when I was younger. Like I grew up on the real world and a lot of stuff like that. And The Surreal Life roped me in because they had China and Maven and a lot of other pro wrestlers on there. Now they got yourself. Explain to us, like, how, how did this process come about? Because, I mean, I know you spent a lot of time in your life auditioning. This doesn't seem like the type of thing you audition for. It's the type of thing they seek you out for. Yeah, it's crazy that you say that because I just thought about that the other day. And I feel in life, you have to work really hard. You have to be diligent, disciplined, have a good attitude. And... You might try, 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 try over and over again and get no's, but all that work will at some point pay off. And that's all the big jobs of my life that kind of happened um, with Pitch Perfect randomly got the job and Surreal Life, the same thing. Like it blows my mind of how many people, I believe that production was telling me they casted this for over eight months. They were trying to, yeah, I never auditioned for it. I literally, the day after I got released, I got a call from my manager being like, Surreal Life wants you. Wow. And I was like, wait, <laughs> wait, Surreal Life, like the one with like Bridget Nelson that I based my entire character off on um, the WWE with, like Flav of Flav. That, that, you know, <gasps> calls, calls very <laughs> successful one. spinoffs right there. Like, Yes, yes. It's so crazy. Um, So I was blown away really 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 blown away I was I was definitely really nervous going into it because I just had gotten released so I was like going through all this like emotional ups and downs and um just trying to figure it out like what I wanted to do what am I going to do I was so focused on everything wrestling WWE you know wanted to become champion and um it was interesting throwing being thrown into the situation where I'm living with um, seven strangers who are all in their, are all celebrities and also from all different walks of life, all different perspectives, all different cultures, different religions, different careers. And we're put in this huge, beautiful house in Mexico city and with no doors, by the way, no yeah. doors. So uh, that on the other side is like slightly giving me anxiety um, and the cameras at all times, not just sometimes, but literally cameras everywhere, mics everywhere, even in the bathroom. And so, um, yeah, that like, I would definitely get anxious about it, but it was interesting being put in that area where someone like Kim Coles, like Kim Coles, Tamar Braxton, and even Dennis Rodman, like they uh, uh, gave me so much uh, great advice for what I was going through. And I don't know if that will make the like make the cut or not make the cut. Um, you know, there's only so much that you can put in to um, seven episodes. I, we don't know much. I don't know yeah. if it's seven episodes, nine episodes, six episodes. There's been a lot of <laughs> a lot of things floating around, and I'm going to be watching all these episodes for the first time on Twitter with you guys. So um, yeah. Um, so I'm not sure what will make it and what will not. So you guys will have to tune in. But um, truly grateful because Kim gave me so much great advice after she 
finished with living single and living color. And then Tamar with, uh, gave so much advice of different things she's gone through and really was Dennis Rodman that it's going to be really interesting to see how it all plays out on the show, but um, how he was just instantly we had a connection because of like, I was just, I was, was going to ask if you all talked no. about wrestling at all. Of course, you know, so like the first thing I was just like, I couldn't believe Dennis Rodman was there. I was like, oh my gosh, Dennis Rodman, this is crazy. Um, and then also because he was in wrestling and I yeah. think that's just so cool and incredible. And he's just always able to somehow be relevant in pop culture. Um, and politics he, at this point. <laughs> everything um and so he was he really was like you got to evolve and I didn't want to hear that I was like what like I'm sorry I want to be champion um and you know he's just from like he retired at 36 and like just like giving me things that like at first I was not so happy to hear um but sometimes honesty is the best policy and it really made me after leaving really keep that into perspective you know he would always be like why are you going to do something that you're good at do something that you're great at and you know you're great on the mic you're great managing um and he's like you know you're always going to compete against charlotte flair in the ring um so um i would get hot about it but um yeah it, it, it hindsight i'm really grateful for that experience because i can I don't know. I just took, took a lot inside and really thought about a lot of those things. And then moving forward, really everything I do moving forward, it's like, no, I want to be great at it. Even if I love this, even if I love it and, and it makes me happy, I don't want to do things that I'm good at. I want to do things that I'm great at. And I'm not going to compromise that anymore. Loved the surreal life. Uh, I, I'm not a reality TV show guy. And I was a sucker for that show. Like Tammy Faye Baker finding out why Vanilla Ice was famous was great for me because she had never heard Ice Ice Baby before. So they played it for her in the car. Uh, Maven almost beating up a transphobe. That was a good one. That was that was fantastic to see. Like, I'm excited to see what happens on this season. Oh, my God. I, I haven't watched a reality show in years, CJ, and I'm watching this. I'm very excited. Oh, my gosh. It's going to be so exciting. I um, The crazy part when you're talking about, uh, like, not knowing, I they take our phones. So I... Um, didn't know everyone and so i felt i was like i need my phone i need google i need to be <laughs> searching these people um so it's definitely interesting of how much we rely on our phone at least for me to um you know give the illusion that i'm a lot brighter than do you maybe. all get the landline that you can make the calls on like once a day or anything because yeah. i like to imagine you asking miro to google these people because that's a segment in its own right there <laughs> we definitely had uh, like a Zoom okay. area, which like, yeah, I actually, Miro gave me a lot of information. He basically, I knew Dennis Rodman from um, ba basketball and then from WCW. Yeah. And I didn't know all these other things like, um, you know, he was on Celebrity Rehab or all these like other things that he had gone through in life. And so Miro would be giving me the tea. I got to get like, him to work for the dirt sheets. Yeah. He's got to, we got to get him on the payroll sometime soon. <laughs> um, so, so, I mean, he has mentioned you on AEW TV many times, not by name necessarily, more by like, physical capabilities and attributes and things like that. Does he ever run those by you or is it a surprise to you that you like that you see as it happens? It's definitely a surprise to me as it happens. <laughs> yeah, 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 for sure. He doesn't uh, run too much by me. <laughs> I love that. I love that. And um, you had said recently in an interview, you would do an AEW thing if it made sense, but you want to tell good stories and you want to make sure that, that it makes a lot of sense. And that kind of goes back to what you mentioned doing something that you're great at and you have a lot of experience telling stories when you sometimes hear the crowd chant for you and, and ask for you, how does that make you feel? Does it, does it give you that itch to go back? Cause I mean, that's that, that can never feel bad to hear people wanting to see you. Yeah. It's, I mean, there's no drug in the world like it. It's the biggest adrenaline high you'll ever get, at least for me. Um, and there's nothing more that I love. I mean, of course, if they're chanting your name, I mean, there's, hmm. It's insane. I mean, the whole arena is chanting for you is just mind blowing. I'm always so 
um, honored that people would, would do that. But I also love being booed. I mean, there's no better feeling to be able to like control a crowd that you can get them to kind of do exactly what you want them to. And it's definitely easier and for at least me. And that might be because I like to stir the pot. Yes. And it's funny to me to be like get to see people like all like woo um riled up. And so I feel like wrestling's perfect because then I can just lean into and commit to it. Like, okay, yeah, hate me. Bring it on, you know? And I feel in wrestling, a lot of times people want to be the cool heels and they don't want to commit to being like, no, like hate me. I'm going to, I'm going to make you money because you hate me. Cause someone's going to want to whoop my ass. And so I feel that Miro and I, I learned a lot of that from Miro too. You know, he, he, he was such a great teacher um, for me and the psychology of storytelling and the psychology of being a villain. And I always say there's no greater villain than Miro. And um, so, yeah, I would, I, I'm thankful for that. And I, I do miss that. I miss it a lot. I miss performing. I miss the fans. Um, there's no better feeling to be able to get that um, screen time where you are connecting with the fans. You're connecting with the people and you're provoking an emotional reaction. So and I, yes, it's great. I miss it. So I did see you at, a, I, think, I think I saw you in Nashville, which, uh, do you all still live there? Do you all live in Nashville? We live, we live um, in Nashville. We live in LA. Sure. We're um, Miro's building and designing a house in Bulgaria. Nice. So, yes. Nashville's yeah. like Southern Vegas now. Like, it's it's blown up just the last few years. But uh, I saw you saw you at an appearances. We haven't seen you in the ring, but you were briefly announced for a match earlier this year. And, I mean, I, I know that a lot of stuff with that promotion didn't end up working out. Hate to see it because it looked like a good card. But like, how do you pick and choose situations like that where you're like, you know what, I'll entertain that offer. I think that this will make sense. Like, how do you sort of sift through that? Because I'm pretty sure you've had plenty of plenty of opportunities. Yes, I think with that one, it was just like a perfect storm. You know, the the promoters um, who were booking the show are, are friends of mine, if it's Dean, Mojo, um, and Steve. And um, so that's for sure, 100%. Like I probably, I, I trust Dean um, a lot. And he was so transparent with everything. So I know that there was like a lot of people upset on Twitter, you know, and I, you know, I was, he was always very transparent from the very start that that could possibly be a situation. And so that's, that's a big thing for me is like, I've worked in this business in, in Hollywood show business since I've been 17. And so don't try to work me because I'm already like four or five steps ahead of like the BS. Um, so I've always, I was really happy about that. And then with Lena, um, Nia Jax also, uh, she is a longtime friend of mine and I love telling stories with her and I love wrestling her. Some of my favorite wrestling matches and story um, in the women's division was my story with her. And so I felt like there, it, you know, we were going to fight for the championship and it made sense and the money made sense and the opportunity. And it just kind of, it, it sounded fun. And that's a big thing for me too, is like the story made sense in that area. And also it was fun. It was going to be fun. Like Dean loves to do TikTok, Naya, a lot of the other people like to do social media and, um, yeah, I, I was like, I'm going to see my friends and we're going to go somewhere. We'll be able to the perform so and then it worked out but it's all good you know it wasn't meant to happen then when they did the angle with you going through the table every week a lot of people i'm sure you saw it they're like oh they're punishing her because miro's gone they're punishing her because miro's gone i never got that feeling i found it entertaining every week at the very least and it's like okay eventually naya gets her comeuppance it's 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 a story it's it's being told did you ever get the feeling that it was it was a punishment or anything like that no, not at all. It was, it was really coincidence and um, it worked and it helped me get over as a baby face. And um, I feel like if the crowd was there, if we were in a lie, it would have been even much more. I've always like even the way I won um, Survivor Series, I think that and how Vince kind of set it up. He really wanted me to be like her to kick me out of the ring. I think that would have had a much um, different reaction with the fans there um and maybe we hopefully we want lana chance and it's just like there's it was just a different time in the um thunderdome the era 
Yeah. Yes. Yeah. And um, so, um, but I'm still very grateful for that story. And it just, it was crazy because what happened was they wanted, Vince wanted Naya to get over as a baby face. And so he's like, why don't we have her start putting people through tables every single week? And that's how the whole thing started. And I guess like they, someone either pitched or something, possibly me, maybe it was T, like TJ, it just was something with the story. I think me and Natty were having a match with them. And I was so excited. I was like, oh my God, please. And me and Liv were literally fighting over who was going to get the table spot. I was like, no, I want the table spot. And she's like, no, 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 I want the table spot. I'm like, no, no, no I want it. And so um, I think they were trying to build her a little bit more. Sure. So they're like, okay, she's going to get the table spot. And at the time I was still coming out of the Bobby Lash, like just coming out of the Bobby Lashley oh, yeah. story so I was oh my god I was the most I was the you know one of the most hated heels and so and Natty and I were, were our, on I don't know if we were both healed we were definitely on the heel side and so he she put me through the table and I was so excited and someone told Vince I, I think I think it was TJ and Michael Hayes was like you know CJ's so excited about going through this table so this is her dream because it was I had pitched so many times to go through a table and Mira shut it down he was Boy, like absolutely they, they not were ready that. to make your dreams come true that's for sure <laughs> Yes. Yes. And so I came back um, to Gorilla and Vince was cracking up and he like loved it. And he's like, I can't believe this is your dream. <laughs> <laughs> and I was just like really thankful for that opportunity because it was um, like TJ would remind me every single week that he hadn't even gone through a commentary table. <laughs> and I just felt like so blessed for that opportunity. And so the following week, they're like, oh, then on top of it, Miro had done the podcast yes. about his whole, like, you know, just opening up about things a couple of days before, but they dropped it Monday morning. And wow. so it just seemed like he was just asked a question of like, do you think she's going to get punished? And he's like, I hope not. I hope they wouldn't do that. I think they're professional. I hope they wouldn't do it. Yeah. And that was started to get so much attraction, uh, traction. And then that happened. So, you know, the fans, the fans are great. They have my back. They were like, screw WWE. That's messed up, you know? <laughs> and then I, they just started going with it. And I think they just saw the perfect storm. And I, that's why I love, I love the fans. They're so great. And they really have my back and I appreciate them for as that forever. As we wrap up the wrestling questions, what do you think of the new regime? And, and like, what did you think when that was announced that Triple H would be taking control of things? Stephanie and Nick Khan uh, near the top. I, I think Triple H is a genius. He hired me. Um, he was in my tryouts in 2000, the beginning of 2013. And um, he paired me with Miro. He guided me so much and the approach of creating essentially the character, the ravishing Russian with the suit, with the hair, like he was really hands-on with that, very hands-on with Miro and I. So I will forever be very grateful because I mean, people still talk about the tank, still talk about that, that Russian, the ravishing Russian and her accent and her look. So I'm forever grateful for that. I think he's brilliant. I think he is a genius storyteller and you know, he understands how to entertain, how to give good, like the give it all like the give what where the hardcore fans want to really see but also what the commercial fans want to see the great matches but also the relationship stories and then the entertainment so it's really cool it's really cool to see a lot of his um projects and things that he was hands-on come to um wwe now and um i think it's a great shift it's exciting it's an exciting time for wrestling we saw another pretty exciting time for you. I think it was I think it was last year. You had the opportunity to work with Bruce Willis, like right before his it looks like his career's winding down, which is, you know, unfortunate what, what he's been through. But it seemed like you were very, very proud of that. I saw you posting on your social media for uh, Cosmic Sin. How was that for you? <laughs> it was a crazy experience. I feel like I have all these um, different crazy experience stories. Yeah. Um, I am very grateful because he's such a legend and an icon and acting and just a superstar. And so now, especially since he's retiring, it's um, I'm truly grateful to be able to have that opportunity. It was a very different experience. I love sci-fi. So that was really cool. Um, it was also really cool to play a character that was originally written for a man and have a bazooka bigger than myself. So <laughs> that was a lot of fun. And yeah, I, I will, I'm grateful. 
you're in all these movies, TV shows, red carpets. I see you at events like every week you're at a new event. What fan, what like celebrities have you met that are like shocking wrestling fans that are like, what you're wrestling fans. There's a number of them that will follow me on Twitter. Cause they like want dirt. They think I'll tell them dirt that I don't put publicly and they'll sneak in the DMS. Who do you have like that? I, a Skylar is Skylar Aston is yes. always like shockingly. And I'm really good friends with him. I've known him like since 2011 pitch perfect. And we instantly had a crazy bond and we're just instant friends. And um, so it was really with him. I think forever will be the most wild experience because I will never forget when I got signed to the WWE in 2013. And I went to like, there was some party we were having for pitch perfect and he was freaking out like he was like oh my gosh he's like I'm literally going to Wrestlemania next week with my brother I can't believe this what and I was just like wait what and then every single time like I will get texts from him or calls from him or like and he knows all the team like he knows all the team like when the whole like um nuclear heat was going around about Lana has nuclear heat um in like 2015 or like like yeah 16 2015 16 he would call me up and he's like so um, I heard you had nuclear, you have nuclear heat. With I'm like, oh my God, I want to need you to stop re- reading the dirt sheets right now for a second. Like that is, uh, calm down. Um, and so like, he has a ton of storylines that he would pitch to me. He's like, how about you pitch this to Vince and Hunter? <laughs> so I love, I, I love it. He knows all the tea, all the information, has great creative ideas. So if anyone wants an extra writer, he's, he's, he's there. He's there for it. Well, guys, make sure you check out The Surreal Life uh, back on October 24th. CJ Perry, Dennis Rodman, Frankie Muniz, so many more. CJ, I want to thank you so much. we got to do this again. Yes, and subscribe to cjperry.com. There you go. Subscribe to cjperry.com. Follow her on all her socials. They will be in the description below. Until next time, guys, we're out.